So um, last week I opened up a an ultra fire single cell. Opened it up with a hacksaw, nothing fancy, and uh, no smoke, no sparks. But now I want to test what happens when you abuse lipo. Um, I've got a number of these cells from packs that I've repaired, and these are Turnigy 5 amp hours or 5,000 milliamp, and they're fully charged at 4.2 volts and fully discharged at 3.0. Um, if you read the warnings on all kinds of RC websites, you'll hear how you're never supposed to over discharge, you should not overcharge. There's a spec to how fast you can charge and how fast you can discharge, which is the C rate. These are rated 20C, which means a 5 amp hour cell can be discharged at 20 times its rated capacity in amps. So 5 amps times 20, 100 amps. I can get within spec 100 amps out of a cell and discharge it in 3 minutes. Three minutes. Now um, that's almost a uh, complete dead short. I mean, you're discharging a cell in three minutes. You're not going very far if it's on an electric bike, so you end up paralleling a bunch for more range. Um, but what I'm interested in finding out is what happens when you overcharge, over discharge, short circuit, puncture, crush, um, do the various things with RC LiPo, and I want to do it myself to see what it does. Because you watch videos online from people who have got new cells, they've crashed with them, they've had various incidents they don't report and uh, I want to know exactly how dangerous these things are. So the first thing we're going to do is fully charge a cell and then discharge it to zero volts and then keep cycling it to see if something happens. More on that later. Now uh, a few things about safety. Um, last time I did that with just a tube and a hacksaw and bench vice in the driveway. I pretty much knew what to expect and it wasn't going to be very dramatic. With LiPo cells, I'm not taking any chances. I am going to wear a face shield, leather gloves, um, a sacrificial meter. This is my old meter. I have a fluke at the house, but I'm not going to put an expensive meter in harm's way. So this one, I don't care if it gets charred or smoked or whatever. I have infrared, or not infrared, but just a, a sensor, a temperature probe, so I can check temperatures of something once it melts, possibly. Um, some alligator clips. I have soldered a positive and a negative cable to one single cell. Um, so I can alligator clip for voltage readings and I can charge through the leads and that's all good. Uh, I set up a metal enclosure, uh, galvanized steel, with cinder bricks on the bottom lined with rubber mat. So nothing can short circuit on the bottom side. Put a piece of wood and a piece of plastic at the back. If I do get fire, I can see how hot it got, if it actually lights fire. Um, buckets of water on the ready, and garden hose right behind it. So I'm ready as far as single cell fires shouldn't be such a big deal. I do have a fire pit next to me here, but I don't want to leave pieces of battery material in my fire pit, so I'm doing this separately. Um, this is not something you want to do if you have no experience playing with fire and sparks and dangerous things. I've got a few years under my belt and I'm still very cautious about it. So, safety first. <laughs>